Silicon used in the anode of lithium-ion batteries has great potential to increase specific capacity of currently produced cells, which use primarily graphite in the anode. The theoretical capacity of silicon is about 10 times greater than the carbon used in graphite anodes. However, the 400% volume expansion and contraction silicon experiences on lithiation and delithiation causes many issues in longevity of batteries. I'm Wes, and this is Intercalation. So what exactly happens when the volume of silicon expands and contracts during charge and discharge of the cell? There are three major issues determined from many academic studies on silicon anodes. First, the silicon particles pulverize and fracture. This causes deterioration of the material and leads to the second problem, which is delamination from the current collector. The third issue is when the silicon particles fracture, this causes the solid electrolyte interphase layer, or SEI, to break apart. On the next cycle, the SEI layer needs to be rebuilt, consuming lithium ions and causing capacity decay. To deal with these issues, several strategies have been employed. One is making the silicon particles very small to the nanoscale so that the expansion and contraction issues are reduced. When you make silicon so small, the mechanical properties at this nanoscale behave differently than at the larger micron level. Another method is coating the silicon with different materials such as carbon or polymers. This can work well to prevent the SCI layer from being rebuilt on each cycle. One other strategy is to make the silicon porous in structure so that it can expand and contract more like a sponge than a solid crystal. This can help prevent pulverization and create longer cycling silicon batteries. The current state of using silicon and lithium batteries is limited in that the maximum weight percentage of silicon in the anode is around 10%. At this level, manufacturers have been able to increase the specific capacity of the cell without sacrificing too much cycle life. The issue with higher loading silicon anodes is that all the issues I mentioned before start to degrade cycle life greatly. Some companies have been able to achieve high loading silicon anodes above the 10 weight percent that perform well but are extremely expensive. One example is Amprius, who has been producing 100% silicon nanowire batteries. Their method involves the first method of reducing the particle size of silicon so the mechanical properties are changed for the better regarding expansion and contraction. Kong Sung, the CEO of Amprius, has acknowledged the need to reduce the cost to scale this technology. The issue is that the primary growth method involves chemical vapor deposition in which the silicon nanowires are grown and this is a slow and energy intensive process. Until this method can be made cheaper or another method of processing invented, it's unlikely that this will scale to be used in everyday lithium cells. Another interesting company in the silicon area is Sela Nanotechnologies. They aren't very explicit about their exact approach publicly, but by reading several of the release patents, it appears the primary strategy is to create nanoporous silicon with a carbon porous shell. This is a combination of many strategies and looks like a nice fundamental approach. From Sela's website, they are going to be or already producing high loading silicon anodes for use in mobile and wearable applications. There is likely a similar scaling problem as with Amprius in bringing the production costs down. Another major approach from a manufacturer that can't be ignored is Tesla's use of raw metallurgical silicon with a polymer coating. This was stated at their recent battery day, but specifics on the type of polymer coating and purity grade of the raw silicon haven't been made public yet. One issue with using unrefined silicon is that metal impurities can negatively affect performance. However, some impurities, such as iron, for example, can actually store energy on the anode side. There hasn't been much further discussion on the polymer coating or particle size of the silicon to be used by Tesla, but several academic studies have used polypyrrole, or PPY, with good results for silicon, as well as other cathode materials. Overall, bringing high-loading silicon batteries to the commercial market is extremely difficult. Another major consideration, if all the major issues are to be addressed, is the underlying expansion and contraction of the battery cell using a high loading of silicon. This would put use limits on the cell, and it's likely that void space would need to be placed inside the cells, which would prevent volumetrically dense cells from being produced. 
It's difficult to say which approach is best, and perhaps a combination of many approaches to solve silicon's problems will ultimately be used to get higher and higher loadings of silicon. Perhaps in the next 5 to 10 years, we may see commercially produced cells with up to 20% silicon loading. Even if advances are made in the lithium metal and solid state battery areas, it's likely silicon will be around for its low cost and stability at lower weight percentages in the anode.